Well, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. So good to be with you guys on this Wednesday evening, month of July 2020. want to welcome all of you one more time into our Bible study. Uh, it's always good to get together with people that are interested in the Word of God, wanting to learn and grow and mature. So uh, for me, it's a thrill to have you join tonight. Uh, gather your family around, if you would, your notepads and pens and papers and iPads, and note, notebooks, whatever you need. Uh, we're going to go deeper into uh, study tonight and look at the, the um, things that the Lord would have us to, to study. Um, the epistles, that's where we are. We're in the New Testament, a specific one. So we will continue in Galatians tonight. But uh, first of all, as always, we do start with prayer, and we want to make sure that uh, we have the mind of God in our study so that we can understand the, the Word of the Lord and have comprehension of what is uh, trying and attempting to be taught to us and leading and guiding and helping us. You know the needs that you have. You know what's going on in your family. Uh, you know, prayer requests that have been given to you as individuals or maybe on the church website or however that is. We want to pray for those. Also, we want to pray for our community. We want to pray for our city. I want to pray for our nation. We desperately need a move of the Spirit of God in our world today. So let's begin right now with prayer, and then we'll get into the Word of the Lord for tonight's lesson. Join me, would you, Lord? We love you and we thank you, Jesus, for another opportunity to gather together online, to study the word, Lord, to look to your truths, dear God, that are forever established. We believe you, Lord, and we believe the Bible is your word and it is the, a guide for us, a lamp to our feet. It lights our pathway every day. Thank you, Lord, for every individual, every home, every family that is gathered together tonight. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to us, lead us in the word, let us find truth and apply it to our lives, Lord, in our growth and our maturity. Pray for the needs, dear God, of your people. God bless each one, Lord. You know the physical things going on. You know the sicknesses and, and the disease, Lord, this pandemic, the financial needs, Lord, those that are struggling on jobs. You know, God, every situation, Lord, I pray for our friends and neighbors and those tonight, God, that are hurting and struggling, Lord, I pray an extra blessing on them. Bless Chattanooga, Lord, bless our community. God, bless the United States of America. Give us revival in this hour, Lord, like never before. We love you, trust you, and believe you tonight. We give you our time together. Let us pursue you, hunger and thirst for you. We love you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we are last week, uh, just to touch that just for a moment, last week we learned in the book of Galatians the, the letter that Paul wrote to them was, according to historians, was his first letter to one of the churches. Uh, again, he was attempting as a leader, as a voice, um, to give some guidance and direction uh, to me, it's very intriguing to read any of the epistles, the letters that are written, uh, because the men, the authors who who wrote or penned or or, or transcribed, if you will, the letters, uh, they were unable to get physically to those places, but they could write and encourage, and they could have the letter read once it arrived to location, and once it, it was read in one place, it could be shifted to another and another and so forth and so on. And I believe that uh, Paul was determined, he, was, he had a purpose and a calling to help the new converts, to help the new churches to understand uh, that salvation was a work of the power of Jesus Christ in the life of any human. We discovered last week, of course, that uh, uh, the Greeks and the Jews now are, are coming together, churches are growing, Gentiles uh, Jews, believers, those who knew, those who were of the heritage and the lineage and so forth and so on. Uh, we understand that uh, Paul's writing to them was for encouragement and guidance and direction. So uh, last week we did Galatians chapter 1 and chapter 2. Very, very interesting. If you haven't watched it, I encourage you to go back to the archive and look at that. 
Tonight, we're going to pick up with Galatians chapter 3. Um, in, in the reading here, Galatians 3, let's begin at verse 1. Now, notice the phrase here in this, in this particular setting. O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you, this only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? That verse 3 says, Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, and now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? <laughs> Notice in his letter here to the Galatians, uh, you're foolish, Something has happened. He even says, who, who has bewitched you? Who has sown seed among you that is now bringing fruit of lies and, and bad intent? Who lied to you and, and caused you to turn away from the teachings that you, you have already received? The, the planting of the church the establishment of how the, the church was going to be run, the move, the supernatural move of the Spirit of God. There's, there's no other, other way that you could have this uh, overwhelming supernatural presence of God except the Spirit of God be doing the work. But some reason for somehow, now notice in Galatians, uh, he also mentioned in the first chapter how that they have been lied to and how they began to believe another doctrine. And then he tells them if, if an angel or anybody else preaches or teaches something else, they're accursed. Chapter 3 in this letter, the way it's been translated to us, he calls them foolish Galatians uh, because they have are considering, or, or in Paul's writing, he, he's looking at this in, in his mind saying to be bewitched, means that perhaps you're questioning your experience through the Spirit of God. Um, he's asking them, in essence, did your life change? Did everything in your world get turned upside down for the better, for the blessings, for the goodness, the mercy, the grace, the love of God, all of those things working? But now you feel like it's not so vitally important. The new birth experience in you, Paul was letting them know, brings hope and peace. And then that hope and peace, once it's established, do you decide then that the flesh is going to be the master of your life? That's a call. Oh, foolish Galatians. You, 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 you're not obeying truth now. Jesus Christ did a work in you, and now for some reason you're, you're trying to find some other way. Um, the same thing that, that Paul wrote to the Galatians is probably echoed again into our generation in 2020. Someone is trying to change the power of the work of the cross. Um, knowing that the change that comes over our lives has to be, must be a spiritual overtaking, must be people that will fall in love through the spiritual revelation of exactly who Jesus was and who he is today in our lives. Uh, sometimes, my friend, we can allow the flesh, though, to to be, become more powerful, have more provision for us than we allow the Spirit to provide for us. Listen, if you're, if you're hungry for fleshly things, you can feed the fleshly things. But if you're hungry for spiritual things, the Lord God will give you spiritual understanding. Continuing here in Galatians 3, let, let's jump to verse number 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Understand what Paul's saying here to the church. Remember who they were. They were very educated. They could read. They could understand. Uh, they, they comprehended things. So Paul, in his letter to them was letting them know, the Greeks and so forth who were there, letting them know that the law of God is already settled. How God did things is already established, okay? That law, reverting back to Moses again, we learned last week that what Paul was trying to teach these newcomers is they weren't Jews. They didn't understand perhaps a lot of that law, so they're learning it. He's letting them know that the law was given to the people of God as a direction finder. 
that okay? As an accountability partner, if you will. Faith in God's spirit and in his word is how we have to live our lives. They didn't have, for an example, a Moses at the time that this was written. They didn't have an Abraham or name any of the of the other patriarchs, if you will, of the Old Testament. The fact is, is, is what Paul is letting them know is the work of the Spirit in them. They have to allow that contact, that connection, for them to understand the power of the law that was established is now being fulfilled and how the letter of the law is being revealed in them through the working of the Spirit. Now, we know the letter of the law will kill because it is, above all things, more difficult, more contrary. It's, it's almost impossible, if you will, uh, to live by the letter of the law. A, B, C, this is what it is. There's no room for error. But grace, mercy came in through Jesus Christ. You can't, though, give that as an excuse for the working of your flesh. You have to continue to allow the Spirit of God to work. If if you'll study and understand, for an example, the laws of God, again, go back to the Old Testament, you apply those laws to your life. Uh, You know, we have that even, again, today, we have that, um, uh, the the Ten Commandments. Anybody remember those? Yeah, the thou shalt not kill, um, thou shalt not steal. Those sound familiar. It's the same kind of stuff that our courts are filled with today. That came from the law that God gave humanity. All right? Again, Don't get caught up in 2020 misunderstandings or whatever of that. It is still the law of God. The Spirit of God is what helps you follow the spiritual direction that God has given you. And so that's why he's so strong and even even harsh with his words. You foolish Galatians, somebody has bewitched you. Somebody has lied to you, taken truth, twisted it, turned it, and now you're beginning to believe that. Walking in the Spirit, you must have faith in the words that God has given you. Move a little forward here. Notice something else in Galatians 3, uh, verse number 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? It's a question here. It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by the angels in the hand of the mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one. Listen to this. But God is one. Verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, Verily, righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. The law of God was given to men to get them into a relationship with him. That was the law. That's Old Testament stuff. That's what Paul is establishing again with these Greeks, with these Aramaics, with these people that that weren't in under the Jewish umbrella. And he's allowing them to to realize that um, there was laws given so that they could follow the promises and the premise in which God's Spirit had come to them, fulfilling that law. You cannot forget that law. That law has a a reason. And and again, I revert back to one more time, if you will, the... uh, the thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, so forth. Uh, We understand those, but just because you read that law doesn't mean that all of a sudden it has power in your life. What must you do? You have to know the law, submit to the law, yield to it, and don't give up holding to that law. Now, there's a reason for that, because if you transgress that law, if you go against that law, you will pay the penalty. And then What power has grace or mercy in your life except the judge give it to you? The law is for guidance. We understand that. The law is to help us to understand A, B, C about our daily walk, what we do, how we interact, how we connect, and so forth with the Almighty God. Verse 26, notice this of Galatians 3. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. The faith you have... Paul was telling the church, is to believe that Jesus is doing a work 
in your life. For as many of you, verse 27, let's continue. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Greek, no, I'm excuse, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Remember the promise that God gave to Abraham, the stars of the heaven, the sand of the sea, man, he's going to be multiplied, 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 all right? That was the promise that God gave to Abraham. And to date, it's exactly what has happened through Abraham's seed, okay? Now, follow this for a moment. The truth is, though, is, is if you are a Greek or if you're a Gentile or outside of that covenant with Abraham, then your chance of being saved or your chance of having hope of a, a wonderful future in God is very slim to none. So Paul then tells the church, if you believe in Jesus Christ, it is by your faith in him that you will allow the law of God to be fulfilled in you. Knowing that there's neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free. He even goes as far as to talk about, about if you're male or female, neither male or female. But the fact is, is no matter who you are and in what part of the square of humanity that you're in, you can have faith in Jesus Christ. Interesting. You could be born in this country, be raised in this country, speak 17 languages, enjoy food from all of these cultures, and everything that's a part of you as an individual, you still have to submit to faith in Jesus Christ. That's how salvation comes. And so in his explanation to them here in, in chapter 3, he's telling them that there's only one body of Jesus Christ. And that is those who believe in what he did. There's no question, even Paul is concluding here, although he, again, we studied last week a little bit, he didn't walk with Jesus in shoe leather. He is concluding by the revelation God gave him that everything was done by his word, and that was Jesus Christ made flesh. So if you're going to live for God, if you're going to make heaven your home, the future that you're looking for bright and, and righteous and holy and just and perfect, it's because you believe that Jesus did a work for you. You embrace the fact that Jesus loves you. Let, let's continue. Watch this, how, how Paul continues. Let's look in chapter 4 right now. Galatians 4, 1. Now I say that the heir... As long as he is a child, listen to these, these are very profound words. As long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. He is born into royalty, but he is a child. He's just born into this, but has no knowledge. Notice, but is under tutors and governors unto the time appointed of the father. All right. He's got to grow. He's got to mature. He's got to learn. Same thing with us. Every single day, we understand that. Verse three, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, a capital S, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Verse 6, And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Have we heard those words before? Again, the connecting of the Greek and the Aramaic, the two languages of that particular day in this particular setting. Notice how, how important this is. A, a child can be born into a wealthy family, into a place where uh, he has all he needs, so forth and so on, but he's not born in day two uh, take possession of all things. He, he doesn't even know how to hold a fork. He doesn't know how to make decisions. So he has to have teachers and instructors teach him. It's the same thing Paul's telling them. You need to understand something. You might be a blood relative but you are not mature enough yet to grow into that position or to obtain that position. You have to grow into it. When you're born in this world, we need teachers, agreed? We also need salvation, and we need to understand through the instruction we receive how to get that. It's evident that we can all do bad by ourselves. 
Agreed. We, we can all do the wrong things and, and we can all make really bad decisions. We don't need anybody's help for that. Right. But when it comes to the spiritual manifestation of God in your life, that what the blood of Jesus does, you need to learn these things. That revelation of who Jesus really is, it's got to be that light that goes off in your mind and in your spirit to where you, you begin to fall in love with Jesus. You, you begin to embrace what he's done for you. It doesn't matter about what life brings your way, the trials, tests, things that you go through. The fact is, is every single day that spirit of God is leading you, the good times, the bad times, the up days, the down days. You need to understand as humans in our fleshly body, we deal with a lot of questions, a lot of of things and, and nature, if you will. But when the spirit begins to unfold itself within us, we are trying less to follow that fleshly nature and more to follow that spirit nature. That's what Paul is expressing here to the Galatians. Verse 9 in chapter 4, listen to this. But Now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, okay, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Notice what he says. Watch this. Verse 10, ye observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Now, is there anything wrong with a calendar? No. Is there anything wrong with knowing what time of day it is so that you can make plans? No. What he's saying here, though, they're, 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 and again, the reference is very clear, uh, pagans, country religion, if you will. Uh, I don't have time tonight to go through where the pagan worship and the pagan gods and the pagan way of life was established, but quickly. Um, Those who were common folk could not make it into the large cathedrals and palaces, if you will, and churches. So they weren't allowed to go there. So they, in their country settings, began to establish their religions. An example, um, the, the priest they saw in the big city churches had on a big miter, big headgear. Well, they couldn't afford that gold or whatever had to be made into that. And so what did they have but country things? And that's in pagan worship. That's where goat heads originated. They used those as crowns. On and on it goes. Without those details, I don't want to get sidetracked tonight. But understand, what Paul was telling the Galatians here is this. You're, you've something has happened. Jesus did a perfect work in your life. He saved you. He forgave you of your sins. He filled you with his spirit. You spoke in tongues. There was something that happened. Evidence was there, no question. But in such a short time, somebody's bewitched you. And what seemed like to be such a strange thing now has become very almost natural, normal in your church environment and your meeting together environment. And the truth is, is that you've been turned back to bondage. You've been following the calendars. It's full moon, so this is going to happen. It is crest moon, so this will take place. It is this and that, so this is going to happen. And you begin to follow after what man is trying to understand and make of God instead of having faith that in all of God's plan, he has an exact and perfect one for you. It's happened again today in 2020. That's why the Bible is so pertinent in every generation. No matter that it was written hundreds of years ago to today, it is still very pertinent. Why? Because it's humanity. And Paul's words to the Galatians echo to us today. You can have a relationship with God. You can fall in love with a master, serve him, love him. But it doesn't take long that if you begin to withdraw from spiritual direction, spiritual walking, hungering after the things of God, you'll follow that flesh. And that flesh will lead you into, if you will, the things that the world is sidetracking and distracting you from. And all the while, the blood of Jesus is trying to work, but you're not allowing it to. Paul speaks directly to them that you've been born again. You've had a new birth experience. You, you've been changed. But for some reason, you revert back to the bondage of the years gone by. 
you worry about time and space. You, it, it, you, you're taking things out of God's control, and you're trying to control them by your own wisdom, by your own understanding. And the truth is, is that what God is doing in our lives every day is teaching and instructing us and trying to help us to grow and mature in Him. I understand, and I know, even in, again in today, what Paul was saying is, is true today. Trusting in Jesus is not an easy thing to do if you're used to believing and depending on yourself. But you have to have all joy and happiness in Him and Him alone. You can't fabricate that on your own. And, and, and towards the end here of Galatians 4, notice here. This is interesting. Galatians 4.21. Tell me. Ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. So the indication here, again, instructing these Galatians, the indication here is that there was a covenant made. Abraham made this covenant. God had it for him. God established it. When God promised to Abraham that he would have a son, he would be the father of nations, Abraham heard it, he understood it, Sarah heard it, but then they questioned and they turned back to what their flesh desired or understood or comprehended, and they laughed about it. They didn't believe it could happen because of their age and all the obstacles and the, the, the inability to, to, to make sense of it. And so they took it into their own hands, and by flesh, they tried to fulfill God's promise, and that never does work. So to this day, we have the conflict of the child that was born through the free woman and the child that was born through the bond woman. To this day, there is conflict there. What Paul was telling the church is the flesh and the promise of God are, are two things. We're all born in this flesh. We all know how to take care of ourselves. We feed ourselves, clothe ourselves, wash ourselves. We sleep. We think. We, you know, we do what we do in our flesh. But when you come in contact with the master, Jesus Christ, and that power of salvation and conviction and the working of the Spirit of God begins in your life, you then have to say, Lord, I want the Spirit that you've given me to grow, to lead, and to guide me. That's what Galatians' letter was about. So, there's so much written here in this epistle, in this letter. Again, it was Paul's first to one of the churches, written about 50 A.D., Paul is connecting that old to the new to give them a foundation. He establishes that humanity needs salvation. He establishes as well that in this present world, salvation only comes through Jesus Christ. Friend, I'll tell you, there's no greater words to be said than that. Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. But you can't start the race with him and then decide to go backward. You've got to hold on to him. You've got to connect with him. You've got to learn, grow. That's why, if I may, in closing tonight, th that's why I want you to realize how important these Bible studies online are. I, I know that it's taken time out of your busy schedule, maybe, or you're you're trying to fit a lot of things in, and and believe it or not, the the pandemic and in your life and and all of the separation, all the things that are going on in the world that 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 has thrown thrown into the mix other difficult things. But friend, you've got to determine. More than ever, I'm not going to listen to the fleshly things. Instead, I'm going to ask God for direction. I'm going to seek Him daily. I'm going to look to His Word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to talk to Him. I want to spend time with Him. It's already evident that in our flesh we mess up, we fall, we stumble. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we'll begin to let the things of the Spirit kind of drift away. And we'll justify our actions We'll qualify what we say and who we hang out with. And if I may, pagan gods will begin to show themselves in our lives. That cannot happen in 2020. We are so close to the coming of the Lord. Now more than ever before, we have to hang on to the word of God. As I bring it to a close, a couple of things. First of all, as Paul wrote in chapter 3, do not fall back into the trap of your way of thinking and the way your flesh thinks and the things that don't don't let don't be bewitched 
by your current situation, by the, by the things going on, by the enemy's lies. Don't be tricked into that. Secondly, the work of the Spirit of God in your life has to be powerful and strong. Through Jesus, you exist and have purpose and meaning. You got to hold fast to that and live it every day. Parents, you need to be teaching your kids if true happiness doesn't come through your education, through the stuff you have, through the how many cars in the driveway, through the money in your bank account, the clothes you wear. True happiness and joy comes in Jesus Christ. You've got to know that. Fall in love with Jesus. I want to pray with you right now. Would you pray? Jesus, thank you so much for your word for the promises in your word. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to read into Paul's epistle tonight and and even apply it to 2020, where we are in the month of July. I pray, Lord, that the church would rise up. I pray for every individual, every home, every heart, every family that's going through this study with me, Lord, that you would somehow breathe a passion for truth and a passion for the word into their spirits, Lord. Lift them up, raise them to a level, God, where they will hunger and thirst for the spiritual things of God instead of the fleshly things that are so weak and trivial. I pray right now, Lord, you'd be with us this week. Keep your hand upon us. Let us be blessed. I rebuke the enemy. I plead the blood of Jesus over every single one, God, that gathers together to study your word. We love you, Lord. We trust you. Our hearts and souls are connected to you as we grow together in you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Pray for God's direction in your life. He'll give it to you. He will. He'll show you in his word what to do, and then it's up to you to do it. Listen to me. Um, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we're here online every Wednesday. Look for it. You'll enjoy it. I know you will. Uh, for our church members, go to cacchattanooga.org. Don't forget, go on, click on the giving statement or link there. Click that. Your tithe, offering, missions, building fund. Uh, we're still working, still doing the things that we can, just doing them a little differently. But fulfill your obligation, your responsibility. Even if you're not a member of the church, I encourage you, give to the things of God. God will bless you and he will multiply it. Uh, join us on Sundays. Uh, we are meeting in person, 3 o'clock in the afternoon at Metro Tab Church. It's 2101 West Shepherd Road uh, here in Chattanooga, right off Highway 153. Uh, 3 o'clock, we're there with classes for the kids, the young people, uh, the college kids, and the adults. About 30-minute class, and then we come for some fellowship together. And at 345, we gather together, all of us, the body, into the sanctuary. We pray. We ask for God's direction and guidance. At 4 o'clock, we launch into our live stream service. We're there in person. We're praying. We're singing. We're worshiping. We're spending time celebrating the goodness of the Lord. I want to invite all of you to come out and be with us. Invite your friends and neighbors. They can come. It's mid-afternoon. They've already finished their daily tasks. They can come and join us. We'd love to see all of you. I love you. I believe in you. And I know God has a plan for your life. Next week, we'll jump back into this. And uh, I know that God is going to lead and guide us. I love all of you. Have a wonderful week. Be blessed. Until next time, take care.